Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church on this All Saints Sunday. It's good to see you all here. My name's Pastor Matt, uh, and we've got a number of announcements this morning. Uh, first off, um, we need altar volunteers. Uh, so uh, we would like to start. We, so since we've been gathering for worship since the pandemic, we've been celebrating communion in the pews using the self-serve communion kits. Uh, but we would like to start coming forward for distribution of communion. Uh, but to do that, we need folks to set up communion and to take down communion after the service is over. We haven't needed altar guild folks for about three years now, and so we got to form an altar guild. So, um, and a number of folks have missed coming forward to take communion. Uh, it, it's 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 uh, an important part. A, uh, it's not essential, but an important long-standing part of our communion ritual, and I certainly miss it. So um, it'd be nice to have enough folks volunteering to do that, that we can come forward for communion uh, starting the season of Advent and then continue doing that. How many weeks a month we actually come forward for communion will be determined by how many volunteers we have at each service. So if we only have one person volunteering, I'm not having them do set up and take down of communion every single week, every single month. Uh, maybe we come forward for communion just one week a month, if that's the case. And if we've got more volunteers, we come forward more often. So um, uh, with that said, so please, if you'd like to volunteer, come talk to me, let me know. Uh, did everybody get a self-serve communion kit on your way in? Does anybody need a self-serve communion kit? Uh, and don't feel embarrassed if you didn't grab one because there are, there are weeks where I will forget to grab one for myself and I'll have to walk halfway down the aisle and get one from uh, myself. So, um, so there's that announcement. Uh, we've got men's breakfast coming up next Saturday. Uh, we've got CPR training happening Thursday, November 10th. Um, uh, for those who are part of the first aid training on October 26th. Congregational meeting Sunday, November 20th at 10.45 a.m. This is the congregational meeting where we approve the budget for next year, and we should have enough people for quorum, so it's important that you come for that, that, that meeting, that service. Uh, the um, Thanksgiving Eve service... Uh, uh, we have traditionally had uh, the, uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, and usually there's pie involved. Last year I was very excited because I heard there would be pie there. Uh, but it's a service. Last year we only had six people in the pew. And the years before that, before the pandemic, the attendance was pretty slim as well. And so church council, we discussed it, and I think this year we are not going to do the Thanksgiving Eve service. Um, I assume people are cooking or traveling or whatever it is, uh, which is fine. Uh, but instead, this year, we would like to encourage everyone to consider going to the interfaith Thanksgiving service on Sunday, the 20th, November 20th, at 3 p.m., uh, and that is at the uh, Old School Baptist Meeting House uh, in Southampton. Um, this interfaith service uh, has been around, it's been going on for about 26 years. It's been primarily for Southampton Township congregation. This year they've opened it up and are inviting congregations from the surrounding townships, including us. And I uh, will be participating in that service. I believe I'm saying the prayers of intercession, praying the prayers of intercession. So I will be there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think it would be a great way to observe Thanksgiving this month if we attend. So I encourage you to do that. Um, annual Christmas brunch, Sunday, December 4th. There's sign-ups for that in the Narthex area. Please read the, the bulletin announcement there. Uh, annual Christmas concert, Saturday, December 17th at 7.30 p.m. So please read that announcement as well. And I think we've got... One more announcement, so Nancy.
Any other announcements that need to be made? All right. Um, prayers of intercession later on in the worship service. Um, any names of those? Uh, I've got Warren, Rick, Matt, Beth, Jen, uh, Carlene that I've added. Any other names to be added to the prayer? M I L A Miller. Miller. Bob. Milton. Victoria. John and Paul. Jonathan. Donnie and Paul. Dan. All right. Uh, the last hymn, or oh, when the saints go marching in, uh, the words, uh, it goes, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. The oh, Lord is not in the bulletin. It can be sung other way, uh, either way, but I like to include the Lord. So I'm singing it that way. You can sing it however you want to sing it, but I just want to lift that attention to your attention um, that each of those verses, the O oh Lord, O oh Lord, I want to be in that number, the O oh Lord's not there. So, um, And I'm going to play guitar in that. I don't know if I'll process down the aisle on the fourth verse or just wait until after the hymn's done and then process. There. Now, after all that, let us begin. Please rise. Uh, we begin with the confession and forgiveness on the opening page of our bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that called for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness and follow the way of the Spirit and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores to us life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream, I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. We'll now read responsibly from Psalm 149. Hallelujah, sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice, their maker, let the children. <clears throat> let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praise of God be in your throats and the two-edged sword in your hands. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To blot their names from the shame and their nobles against the light. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Alleluia. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit and wisdom, a, a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for all who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of, over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading.
please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If any strike you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's continue with prayer. Gracious God, we gather here in your house among all the saints. Bless us now through your word that we may know your love, that we may share that love with those around us. May the thoughts and meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you. Amen. On this All Saints, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing my dad again. I'm looking forward to playing catch with him. How I love playing catch with my dad, football. I'm looking forward to seeing my grandpa Lavery. Maybe watch some Three Stooges. Oh, who knows? Maybe the Three Stooges will be there. Have a salami sandwich. Have some crusty Italian bread with some roasted red peppers. Slice of provolone. I'm looking forward to seeing my grandma and grandpa O. To listen to some music. to maybe cook with my grandma, to have a salami sandwich, only hard salami, on white bread with a squirt of mustard and a cup of coffee. I always loved the look of my parents' face when my grandparents would give me a cup of coffee when I was way too young to have coffee. There's a lot of people I'm looking forward to seeing. Friends, loved ones. There's a lot of parishioners. Folks I've cared for from multiple congregations down through the years. As a pastor, I've been privileged to stand at the bedside and at the graveside of a lot of people. I can think of Tom and Gail from 
first congregation I served, Emmanuel, John. I can think of folks from Bethel. The last congregation I served, I guess regular call, Christ Niantic, it was Pennsylvania Dutch congregation. Fancy, which means they drove cars. It was Pennsylvania Dutch nonetheless. And the hospitable thing for the Pennsylvania Dutch is that when a visitor comes, you offer them a beer. There are a number of houses that I went to and they offered me a beer. And there's a couple people from that church that I've got a beer date when I see them in the hereafter. There's enough of them now, I think we're going to need a bar. <laughs> and I think of all the people that I've sat out at bedsides and at grave sites, people of all ages. Some, as we would say, life cut too short. Some who had lived a long life. All circumstances, sudden and tragic, over a long period of time of slow decline and still tragic. Some with mixed grief and relief. All of them with hurt and with grief. Yeah. Uh, but not just hurt and grief, but love and joy love and joy of, of family and friends gathering around, gathering around a loved one to celebrate their life. I saw that this week. A friend of mine is, is dying, and I went to visit, and the family was there, and the memories, and some tears, and laughter, and they're planning ahead. They plan to celebrate her life when the time comes. And there's a lot to celebrate. All these moments, all these faces of folks that, that, that I, I remember, that I'm looking forward to seeing. In a certain way, I don't have to wait. Do you know how special this space is that we're in? That when we gather in the name of Christ, when we have this meal together, how special this is? When I was in First Communion, my pastor told our class that the rail for communion. And in that congregation, they had a rail that went from one wall to the other wall, and we all went up and knelt at the rail. He said the rail just kept going through the wall and that wrapped around the world. And everybody taking communion that day takes communion at that rail together in every church. And that we get a foretaste of God's kingdom to come, a taste of that heavenly banquet feast in heaven that awaits all of us. And that all those who've gone before us, those we've never met or known, and those near and dear to us, kneel at that rail. As I think about that, that heavenly banquet feast, and this special space, as we gather here in faith, these, these pews right here, I can imagine them filling with folks who've gone before us faces of people you know and I know that we as we celebrate communion we celebrate life and life everlasting
in our gospel lesson. It reads, Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are, people when, blessed are, are you when people hate you. Woe to you who are full now. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when they speak well of you. Jesus is, on one level, turning things upside down. We play games in this life. Games rooted in our base need for food, shelter, and power. A sense of control in our lives. That we're all get caught up, we all get caught up in trying to compete for more, to make ourselves feel secure, and to escape all the things that make life hard. We all want to be happy. We don't want ever to have to mourn or be hungry or to be hated. And we turn it into a competition to make life that way for ourselves, and we afford ourselves judgment of others for those who don't do as well as us. Well, if you're suffering, well, maybe you deserve it. Jesus is turning that on its head, but he's doing more than that. Whereas we would be tempted to, to read this, you know, it's, it's, it's prescriptive. You get what you deserve. Jesus is trying to shake his followers out of that. And yet, even when Jesus turns it on its head, we still have a tendency to read it as prescriptive. Oh, well, if blessed are the, the hungry and the poor and those who, who weep, well, I'm going to do what I can to be part of that group because I want to be blessed. Oh, those rich people, they deserve to be at woe. Oh, those people who are, hung, uh, uh, who are full now, those people who are laughing, they deserve to have woe. That's not what this is. It's not prescriptive. Oh, you mourn. Oh, you're poor. Oh, you hunger. Let's prescribe you get blessing. Oh, you who are rich, you who are full. Oh, we prescribe woe. We get so caught up in the game, our ears, even when Jesus tries to turn all of this on its head, Make it no longer prescriptive, a game where we're in control. Even when Jesus flips it on our head, we can still twist it in our minds. But this isn't prescriptive, it's descriptive. This is the reality of it. The greater reality of the universe and of God's love is that when we are hungry, we always have hope for God provides for us. All that we have comes from God because God made everything. That when we weep, we can have hope that we can laugh. We can even laugh in the midst of our weeping as I've seen so many times. I saw this past week as I went to go see my friend and her family because we have the promise of life, this mortal life, and we have the promise of everlasting life. There are always blessings to be savored. And that when we are hated, especially for the name of Christ, we can know that we are always loved, no matter what, no if and or buts, because we are all marked with the cross of Jesus Christ in our baptism, period. Nothing can undo that, that God loves us. And that when we are rich, that's a blessing and that's, that's good unto itself. But we should not cling to that. For what will come, life has its ups and downs. Instead, we take comfort and blessing, blessing in God's love. That when we are full, we will eventually be hungry. There's no eating one meal 
and not having to eat another because you feel hungry because that's the, uh, the lot of our mortal existence. But we take not comfort and security and being full and try to strive for that alone or wealth alone. For these things are temporary. They come and go. And when we laugh, we will eventually mourn. And into this we can take comfort in knowing God's love and not security in having to try to laugh all the time. How much do we just sweep underneath the rug yet it haunts us nonetheless? As I think of all the people whose gravesides I have stood, all the people who I've loved, who've gone ahead of us. I think of the love, the love of God shared through them. I don't know how much time I have left on this, in this mortal life. I know it's not my time yet at least not this very moment. I don't know how many years or days or hours are left allotted to me. But what I do know is that life is too short to play all the games by which we strive to be above and better and greater than one another. The games of who has more and who has less trying to buck the ups and downs of life. If somehow we had such control in our lives to begin with. And even if someone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other. If someone takes away your coat and does not with, uh, do not withhold your shirt, Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to us. That this life is so short compared to eternal life. Every moment is precious. Not even fighting our enemies is worth it. That if we keep hating back and forth, at some point somebody is going to have to choose to love instead to break the cycle. On this All Saints Sunday, as I think of all the people who've gone before us, all the people I've loved, I've stood at gravesides. I'm reminded how precious of a blessing this life is. And it's not worth playing the games. That what I'm called to do is to love those around me and to do anything else with every moment of this life is to waste my time to waste God's time, to waste our time. Amen.
let us profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay readers the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters. Quell raging fires and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, send healing to all who suffer, especially today for Dave, Warren, Jack, Matt, Beth, Jen, Sharon, Ken, Violet, Sean. Also, Warren, Rick, Bill, Milton, Victoria, Donna, Paul, and Dan. And also for those that we pray for out loud now in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. If you had not done so before the service, you may do so afterwards, and that is leave an offering in the offering plate next to the baptismal font towards the entrance of the sanctuary. Let us pray. Blessed are you, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of your calling and strengthen us to run the race before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so, with Patrick, Charles, Dave, Carlton, Tracy, Paul, Lean, Joseph, Geraldine, and all the saints with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, uh, that's supposed to be bold. Right. No, it's not. You're missing the song. All right, we move on with the words of institution. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, this is, I'm sorry, uh, take eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts with this meal, with bread for the journey. Give us grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.